What's up, everybody, and welcome back to episode five of the Ship's Log. Today, I'm here with returning offensive lineman Dustin Hall and our newly hired offensive coordinator, Coach John David Baker from Ole Miss. Welcome, guys. Um, Dustin, we're glad to have you back. Coach Pirate Nation is ecstatic to have you. Uh, welcome. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you guys have watched the past couple episodes, but we usually open up with kind of a pirate scenario to get the, the brain juices flowing a little bit, okay. a little icebreaker. Uh, today it is your ship is going down and space on the lifeboat is limited. You're not the captain since he must go down with the ship and you get to take two items with you to the desert, deserted I- island. Sorry. What items are you taking with you? What's the options? What we got? Just whatever. Yeah, on your boat. Whatever you think you got on your boat. <sighs> Definitely going to need something for water, so a container, and then something for fire. So hopefully we got matches or something of that nature on there. Yeah. Coach, what do you think? I'd say this, I, would, I wouldn't worry so much about the water. Something to start a fire. Yeah. And then some type of weapon, whether it may be machete or – we got firearms probably not firearms you'll run out of ammo so i think the machete is a good call too machete or something use it for getting food too Mm -hmm. correct chopping up things on your adventures dustin you were actually kind of a hit in last week's uh scenario when looking for hidden treasure you were you were a name that got brought up multiple times uh so let's talk about you a little bit you transferred in last year um going into the season a name that pirate nation didn't really know of um, and by the end of it, you were one of the bright spots on our offense. Um, definitely a player that, you know, when we were all going against in practice, you knew that you had to buckle up and, mm-hmm. and bring your stuff with you every time. Um, talk a little bit about last season, your first year in, in the program. Um, obviously, we're looking for a much better season this season, but um, just kind of an update on you. Uh, yeah, I mean, the previous spot I was at, I was playing behind a bunch of, like, older guys, so – I never really had to have that leadership type of role. You know, I was always just quiet, just kind of show up, do my thing, leave. Right. Because those guys were there for five years, the other four around me. So when I got here, obviously, the guys around us were either starting for the first time or had five or six or five starts, something like that. You were the vet. Right. So just kind of getting into a leadership role was something I had to grow into. Yeah, and that kind of leads me to my next question. Uh, now you've been here for a year. You're going into – you just finished up winter conditioning. You're in mat drills now going into spring ball. How has your leadership uh, kind of role change now that you've been here for a year and, and you are a vet like you just said? Uh, I feel like when I first got here, I kind of didn't say much because I still had to kind of earn my stripes and respect with the guys. Right. I mean, that's how things work. You you don't come in and be the vocal guy. You have to prove that you, you're – capable of it so yeah now I feel like I'm definitely a more vocal leader and all guys old young it doesn't matter like I feel like I'm able to speak to that and coach from what I've heard you have done almost just that uh, I heard a funny story the first team meeting you walked in you looked at the defense side of the room and you said we're coming for you like don't worry we'll see you soon uh, how do you bring kind of your leadership and energy to a new program right the biggest thing is just be yourself um, you know you get to where you're at in your career and in, in different spots by just being you and, and being who you are. But, um, you know, I felt like this place, I felt like this side of the ball, the unit of, on offense, like we needed a shot of life, a shot of energy. And so that's what, uh, that's the great thing about this offense is that's, that's kind of exactly what it does. But for me, this team's always going to be only as good as the competition. And, you know, we got we to gotta make sure that we're competing at a high level with the defense. And that was one of the things that attracted me to coming here was because I knew that side of the ball, you know, was one of the tops in the league and, and felt like if we could get this side of the ball right and get it, you know, on the same level as the defense, you know, we can go do something really special. And so for, for me, it's just trying to obviously be myself while also, you know, bringing a different edge and a different mentality to our side of the ball that can, you know, go get on the same level as the defense. Yeah, and you talk about uh, just kind of how you are who you've always been on your job, and that's what got you here. Um, you have a wife named Sarah. You have a seven-month-year-old daughter. Um, what else in your past kind of has led to this moment? 
uh, we were just kind of chopping up for the show. You talked about USC, Ole Miss, and kind of your road here. Uh, just let us know about that. Yeah, what I tell people all the time is I, I'm only where I'm at because of the coaches that I've been able to work for and the people I've been around. Like, I've been fortunate in my not only my playing career but my coaching career. Every guy I've ever been around has been successful, whether it was my high school head coach, Sterling Gilbert, who five years later after he was my head coach in high school, he's the offense coordinator at the University of Texas. Wow. And then I, you know, I played for Chris Thompson in college at Abilene, and now Coach Thompson was just an assistant head coach and tight ends coach for Florida State. Yeah. Um, and then from there, just North Texas, obviously we had a ton of success. We had more wins in three years than they had had in the school's history. And obviously going to USC – uh, working for Coach Helton, who had he had won more games in his first five years than anybody in the history of the University of Southern California, and then obviously what we did at Old um, Old Miss with with Coach Kiffin. Um, so for me, the things that have kind of led to this is just the people I've been fortunate enough to to be around. Like most people would, they'd be lucky to be around one of those kind of people. But right. for me. I've just been blessed in, during my career and in, in my life to be around, you know, great people like that and great coaches like that. Yeah, and so when you're around coaches like that where you're just – you're being the sponge, you're soaking up everything, and you're around different kinds of offenses, you see how different coordinators are running it. What kind of do you put into your plate when you're making your playbook and choosing your style that you're running this upcoming season? Right, so you just – you're always – to me, the thing that all of those guys that I was around did a great job of, they were great self-evaluators. And um, always pushing the envelope of making sure you're not just doing things because that's the way they've always been done. And so you may look at a certain scheme or a certain concept and be like, oh, well, we're really good at that. But if you're honest with yourself and you sit down and watch the tape, you may realize some of those things that you thought were really good, you're really not that good at. Right. And so, okay, well, if that's the case – let's not do that anymore or let's, you know, let's try it this way. And so for me, it's picking the things that we've been good at over time while also figuring out ways to make sure we're staying ahead of the curve and being innovative in what we're doing. Yeah. Learning how to be your, your own biggest fan and biggest critic at the That's same right. time. Uh, Dustin kind of on that note, uh, moving and learning into a new offense uh, with coach here this spring, what are some goals that you've kind of set or thought about for yourself with this spring and going into the summer and fall? Like he just said, I feel like the main goal we need to have that we didn't have last year is we need to have an identity. We either – I mean, obviously you have to have a balanced offense. You can't just run the ball. You can't just throw the ball. But we need to find stuff that works. Like right. Last year I felt like we every week we were just trying to, like, find something and find something, you know. But if we can find an identity early, I feel like if we stick to it, obviously if you know it, you're going to be able to do it fast. You're going to be able to do it physical. Yeah. Just find an identity. Yeah, I've heard – um, just one of the things that you're kind of bringing with you is this exciting tempo, uh, really just kind of fast twitch offense. Um, what can Pirate Nation kind of expect from from you and the offense that you're going to put out on the field? Yeah, to me, it's just every offense has, you know, something that they try and do to create an advantage um, or a mismatch. Um, you know, some people it's shifting in motion before snaps. Some people it's, you know, changing in and out of different personnel to give – different looks and get people in certain you know personnels on their own for us it's tempo um tempo is something that i i believe is a is a great equalizer um but also a great advantage it it puts people um in a difficult spot to you get base looks on offense you get people out of position a lot of times because for those guys they're trying to get lined up faster than they normally do but for us it's just another another day at practice right and being on the defensive side of the ball when I was playing that was one of the hardest things to prepare for because I'm sure there's no scout team in America that can simulate an efficient fast tempoed offense right like just you because no. as a scout team on offense and defense too you have probably like a day of review where you're learning what offense you're going to act as for that year mm -hmm. or for that week and then you have to get most of them are young kids to yeah. go out there and try and simulate to the best of their abilities. So, I mean, as an older guy, you just know that when you're, you're out there on Saturday, it's, it's going to be normal. almost a completely different level. Yeah. So that's definitely going to be something exciting to watch. Um, kind of diving in more of personally, and I guess still speaking of offense, uh, I've heard about your, your basketball kind of IQ here and, and your sniping ability from the three-point line. Staff basketball is a big thing here. Uh, I think it's a fun way for our coaches to – 
get a little more camaraderie outside of the uh, office and, and get a little conditioning in. Tell us about your basketball ability, coach. Um, you know, it's uh, – I was – I played every sport in, in high school. I went to a smaller high school, so I played everything growing up. Um, honestly, I love playing basketball still because it's a cheap way to get cardio. You kind of trick yourself into running around and sweating and Absolutely. burning some calories. Um, I would, I'll be honest, I wasn't always the great shooter. <laughs> Um, but when I was a when I was GA in an Abilene, I was playing intramural basketball and I blew out my left knee. I mean, exploded every Sheesh. every deal in there. Yeah, gone. So after that, you know, rebounding, um, you know, going down there, banging around in the paint didn't really interest Not me for you. all that much. <laughs> and so um, if you come over and watch staff basketball, you won't catch me in, in the paint. You'll see me around the three point line. Um, I'll run my mouth a little bit, but other than that, that's about it. <laughs> Talking fast. Yeah, everyone's everyone's good for that. Everyone needs a little sniper on their team. Uh, Dustin, for Pirate Nation to get to know you a little bit better, you're a criminal justice major. Um, our lockers were next to each other, and oftentimes, I mean, we're in there for a while. We'd start talking about what kind of like road or path we want to go down. Mm -hmm. uh, football doesn't work out. You mentioned possibly the FBI, stuff like that. Um, what kind of interests you with that and just like what do you want to do with your school uh i mean definitely want to do something more along federal just because obviously benefits and uh stuff like that but um not right now i'm thinking more of like the postal inspector service yeah like, obviously the fbi is good but that's a big bureau I mean, right it's a lot of people on that so uh my girlfriend's uncle she i actually never even knew what a postal inspector was until I met him, and he just kind of – I did a ride along with him and kind of seen like a day in life, day in the life of like what he does and kind of fell in love with it, to be yeah. honest. So if football That's doesn't awesome. work out, then go along that. Right. And going back to football, uh, a question that we've kind of asked everyone in the past is just is there an NFL player that you kind of uh, look your game after? Um, offense alignment, I feel like, have been kind of more prevalent – in the past couple of years than ever, it seems like, with Trent Williams and guys like that. Um, do you guys have – or do you have – Me personally, I yeah. think just Jason Kelsey, just based off of his size. Obviously, I'm – in the offensive line world, I'm small. Like, I'm right. not a big guy. I'm not long. Um, and I feel like the only thing that – if if you're not huge, you have to be physical. And I feel like my physicality is the strength of my game. Yeah, he's a dog. Yeah. Definitely yeah, someone that's fun to watch. He was fun to watch this past weekend. Uh, I don't want to talk about it, but I, I think it's only fair that I have to. We've oh been talking gosh. about the playoffs and the Super Bowl. Being from Northern California, obviously I'm a big 49er fan. It's tough, uh, tough day on Sunday for me. I mean, I've seen three Super Bowls now in my late teenage years with my team and have yet to see them win one. You got the lights going out versus the Ravens and then you run into Patty Mahomes, who's... No, you can't bet against that guy. Yeah, clearly not. <laughs> Twice. So that's just tough. Um, it's Valentine's Day. I don't know if this will come out tonight or tomorrow. But uh, this might be a little uncomfortable, considering that it's just three dudes hanging out here. But I'm going to need to hear your guys' best pickup lines. Mm -hmm. Coach, maybe the one that worked on your wife. Dustin, maybe the one that worked <laughs> on your girlfriend. Or You walk into Pantana Bob's. I'm talking like a college bar like you see your wife there and like what are you doing what kind of approach are we taking here for me i'm a big guy so <laughs> i mean it's been a long time i've been with her for a long time but if i had to have one i'd be like big guys do it best so but <laughs> something along those i lines, like the confidence <laughs> something along those lines but yeah i mean i've been with her for a long time my game ain't, ain't you, the best yeah you just got to go out in winter time and just beg hey that's Keep it. it warm. Don't even worry about it. That's right, Coach. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I'm a. I'm a great, uh, you know, person to talk to about pickup lines. <laughs> First time I asked my wife for her number, she said no and walked away. So, um, shoot or shoot, though, Coach. That's right, and that's that's kind of how. Uh, you know, honestly, it's kind of how I view my basketball game. Like you miss you gotta, 100 percent of the shots you don't take. You got to play the percentages. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can sit around and miss all those layups and stuff. But if you hit one, that's only two points. If I hit one of those three point shots, that's worth three. <laughs> Same thing with throwing a deep ball. You know, you throw a deep ball, two out of the three things that can happen are good. So <laughs> I just kept shooting, kept shooting, and finally 
it hit. So here we sit. Now. I I love that approach, Coach. So maybe when we start getting midfield a little past it, Pirate fans could. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not All promoting it. I mean, I guess I can. I'm a former player, but some player props. I don't know Chase Sewell. <laughs> Deep yeah. touchdown pass. Let's run it. <laughs> the ball's going up at some point. You yeah. can believe that. I like that, too. I love to see it. Um, breath. The last segment that we do on this show is the high school mascot challenge. I don't have your guys' high school mascots written down here. Mm-hmm. What, what, were, what were your guys' high school mascots? Mine was a tarpon. A what? A tarpon. Yeah, a I fish? Mean, yeah. You're from the West Coast, so you probably don't understand what that is. Okay. It's, Didn't it's need to fish, catch yeah. that. But it's not no baby fish now. Now we're talking six feet long, like strong fish. Like the type you see on the YouTube channels when I'm yeah. watching fishing. Yeah. Is it? It's not like a swordfish or anything like that. Like no, it's just a tarpon. It's just Fighting a, tarpons. It's just a big fish. Big fish with boxing gloves was ours. Coach, I think you're gonna win this I one. I feel I feel pretty confident. We're the Chiefs. Yeah, you're getting hunted down. Yeah, war paint and all. Well. I'll turn unless, you, unless that fish got the boxing gloves on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he might be able to catch a couple hooks. But Correct. I think I'm taking the Chiefs there. Um, yeah, you're you're in trouble. Yeah. I was the Grizzlies, and I'm still taking the Grizzlies over you. You get a right hook from that. They're they're in the river. They're fishing out those things left I and right. They eat fish, but they're eating a tarpon. I don't know about a chief though. Um, speaking of, I don't know where I'm going with that one. But this week, Matt drill started yesterday. Uh, I got a little backlash last week. I said I liked him. I want to clarify. I liked it for the mental part of it. Like, it's mentally challenging, and you're going to find out which teammates are, are with you or not. Um, and honestly, it, it's a good way to kind of weed out the weak ones that aren't really invested or not taking care of themselves outside of it. How are mat drills going for you? What are you seeing from it? Um, and are you ready for it to be over, even though you've already had one? Yeah, I was about to say, it just started, so I can't, can't wish it to be over yet. But, I mean... It's going good. Uh, we kind of evaluated because obviously when you're out there, <laughs> you're kind of focused on yourself, but at the same time you got to try to be a leader and make guys finish to the line and stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, a bunch of new added pieces to the puzzle. Right. And you never really know anybody can lift weights, but when it comes to being a dog, yeah, by the third drill, you find out if you, the guy's yep. going to finish, they're going to like lean over, you yeah. know. So it was always the finisher for me when coach is just like, yep, that didn't count. Like so-and-so didn't touch the line back to number one. And you're like, good Lord, like I'm not getting through this. Exactly. Coach, did you do mat drills at your previous schools? And if not, how was your first experience with it yesterday? So we did a, we didn't call it that, but we had a form of it and, uh, it's very similar. Um, it is basically, um, it's basically trying to reveal guys character <laughs> yeah. because, you know, we tell those offensive guys, anybody can go out there when it's sunny in 75 and go operate and, and do their job. But right. when whether you're playing in a hostile environment or the weather sucks or whatever it may be, it don't matter. You got to compete and go get the job done. And so just trying to teach these guys, basically, we've always said embrace the suck. Like it sucks. It's not fun. Nothing about it is fun, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're there to do one thing and one thing only, and that's go win and figure out a way to win. Hell yeah. I used to listen to a podcast, like a little minute 30 segment on YouTube from Jocko, talking about good. Have you heard that one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would that'd be the one that I'd rock with before Matt drills sometimes. Every time. Just good. <laughs> good. Like, back to one. Sucks good. Good. Yeah. Um, Coach, you have gone almost in Pirate Nation's world viral for your burn the boats uh, tweets when when we were waking up seeing burn the boats tweets out on or I guess I don't even know are they still tweets on X um, Pirate Nation would almost just blow up asking who it is trying to figure it out how would that come about it's kind of a I've heard it like quite a bit but it, it hits different when we're the pirates um, so did you used to use that or were, you were on your flight here and you were like that's going to be it we're burning boats um, so it it I really I'm I'm giving some like true like inside information here, but uh, I actually used it when I came here on my interview. Um, that was your sales. That's part of the sales. Pitch? I guess I yeah I guess you could say that. But my my whole deal with it is this, and it's it's extremely prevalent, obviously here, um, just because of the background and whatnot, but also for um, just today's college football world. 
of Burn the Boats is, you know, it's a story of true story of a Spanish explorer that sailed across the ocean and landed in what is now today's Mexico and um, ended up overtaking the Aztec Empire. But when he landed on the beaches, he told his men, burn the boats. And basically what he was trying to symbolize to those guys, there's no turning back. Your right. old your old way of life, um, your old way of doing things is is done. And, and really, I've left you guys with no choice but to go accomplish the mission. Yeah, you either embrace it and you go attack or you're, you're done. That's right. And so for us, you know, as a unit and as a team, um, guys that were here last year, you know, there is no looking back. That Nothing about last year matters because it, it's not going to help us going forward. Same thing for me, same thing for any of these new coaches, guys that we've brought in. You're old school. None of that matters because none of the games that I, that we won last year, you know, at my previous school, none of, the, none of that helps us win next year right. in Dottie Ficklin. So there's – there's no point in looking back, and basically it was a way to have a fresh start for everybody that, you know, we're not going to dwell on the past, but we're dang sure going to learn from it. Yeah. And it was just kind of – I'll be honest, I didn't, I didn't anticipate or plan for it to take – I really wanted it to kind of stay in-house, but that's, that's obviously not happening. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's what it is. It was a way for our guys to kind of close that, close that chapter, and not only for them but for us as coaches too. Like everything – is focused on being where our feet are. Right. And nothing matters but 2024 pirate football and, and going and putting ourselves in a chance to go win every one of these football games. Yeah, and it's a fresh start for everyone. Um, I mean, like, I'm sure Jarrett's going to have a boat burning or something the first time we get a touchdown in Dowdy Ficklin. Um, but that's definitely going to be awesome. You said, and pirate fans were also kind of big on this um, when you first got hired, that Greenville reminds you of a mini SEC town. Um, coming from Ole Miss, obviously, it's funny because my my brother went to the University of Alabama, and the first time he came here was for NC the NC State game two years ago, which there wasn't an open seat in this place. It was absolutely crazy. It was one of the best experiences ever, and that's the exact same thing that he said. What made you kind of think of that, and and what makes you think this place is so special? For that reason, like you as a coach, you know we're the same way as players. We want to go compete at the highest level and for me I've been fortunate in my career to to be at some high level places institutions that um where people care and that's that's what people love you know SEC football because of just the fans they right. how much they care how much they you know interact and show up well that's the same way here and that's why I felt that way and and it's nothing's changed you know I every time I go out to eat somewhere in town or stop in a restaurant somebody comes up and says something yeah and people always ask me like does that get annoying I'm like no because that's cool it means I know they care right and that's what I want I want people to care I want them to be invested in what we're doing and that's why you know we take great pride and and responsibility and the people of eastern North Carolina they care about this place yeah and so we take pride in making sure we're going to go put a good product on the field for them every week Absolutely. I think, I, I mean, you mentioned you played all the sports. Uh, I don't know how much time you had at Ole Miss to go out and see games and stuff. Hopefully you're able to go see one of the baseball games here. Uh, absolutely an electric environment. Um, you weren't even here really for that. You came later in summer, huh? Yeah, yeah I never. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, I've heard of it, obviously, coming from where I came from. but Yeah, definitely a, a cool place to be. Um, for sure recommend that both you guys go do that. Um but, yeah, I mean, Pirate Nation is, is stoked to have you, Coach. Um, I think they're definitely looking back um, and really excited for you coming back, Dustin. Um, and they've honestly showed that. Right now, ticket season ticket sales are a week in right now, and they're, we're 3,000 more than we were last year at this moment. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that says a lot. kind of speaks to exactly what you were just saying with, um, obviously, we didn't have the success we won last year. Boats burned excitement here now still passionate and they've honestly the fans have invested more thus far with season tickets so uh if you're listening to this be encouraged for you to look that up get into that um but with that being said coach jdb dustin hall that is episode five of the ship's log and we'll see you next time